Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. You got the theory with uh, Mark. Let me show you how we put creating shared value and how we embed creating shared value in our business model and how doing that successfully we can generate growth in Europe. A quick snapshot uh, to start with uh, on Europe, Nestle in Europe, uh, we uh, got 100,000 employees, uh, 153 factories. Uh, we are an industry which is not delocalizing, so we are still investing in our factories and we are still developing a few new uh, greenfield sites. Now, what we got to uh, deal with is what basically everyone in the, in the room has got to deal with is uh, the context of uh, the crisis. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, this was the title of the Financial Times a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we are in a context where the financial crisis has turned into an economic crisis. We are back into a recession uh, in the Eurozone and the economic crisis has turned into a social crisis and uh, in a few cases into political crisis with nationalism, populism and extremism on the rise. And in that context, uh, clearly, uh, citizens, European citizens are much impacted. Uh, this is a time of indignation and social unrest. And one of the key reasons uh, for that is uh, clearly the rise in the unemployment that has increased 50% since the start of the crisis. And possibly the most worrying development is the rise in the youth unemployment with one young European in four who doesn't have access to a job who uh, cannot have access to an active life. If you look at the countries the most impacted in Southern Europe, Greece or Spain, the level of the youth unemployment is 55% plus, and in the worst or the most impacted regions, Northwest Greece, 75%. This is clearly not sustainable, and it's a big concern in the context of an aging Europe. We got the baby movers getting to retirement age and uh, in a context of an indebted Europe. Europe needs its youth at work. In that context, clearly, confidence is extremely weak uh, and well below uh, the um, 10 years uh, uh, hist historical uh, 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 numbers and, um, and we see no sign of a prompt recovery. If you look at the 10 most pessimistic countries in the world, you got nine Europeans. Norway is one of the ten most optimistic with nine Asian. Uh, clearly, in, in such a context, uh, poor sentiment uh, uh, and also the impact, cumulative impact of all austerity plans, private consumption is impacted and turned negative. So the big question the business is faced with is how to create value, how to generate growth in such an environment. And there are not many ways to generate growth in that kind of environment. So there are fundamentally two with two drivers for the growth. One is the pie is shrinking. Yeah? One is to take a bigger share of the pie, to gain market shares. That's one. The second one is to innovate, to grow the pie, to grow uh, the categories, to create new needs, uh, and, and, and to grow uh, the business. Two have got a common point, which is a challenge to deal with in the current environment. What is the common point between gaining market shares and innovating. Both require significant investments. And a big reflex of many companies in a crisis context is to stop to invest, retain, and, and centralize. Uh, so the way we are dealing with that at Nestle is to put in place what I call a strategic virtuous circle. And it all starts with achieving efficiencies across our operations, uh, controlling our costs, to do what? Not to improve profitably short term, but to invest behind the brands, and I'm talking to communication people, and invest behind innovation. While doing that, we can drive market share gains, we can drive our categories, and we can achieve sustainable, profitable growth. The sustainability element of uh, um, profitability development is obviously the growth. And at the core, we put sustainability in, in, in all three dimensions, the economic dimension, the social dimension, and the environmental dimension. 
It all starts with efficiencies, and it's critical to uh, be on top of uh, the operations. And I'd just like to show you what we've achieved in the last couple of years. If I take an index 100 uh, five years ago, uh, we have increased by 60% the impact of our efficiency programs. That allows for investments behind the brands. That allows for investments behind innovation. And uh, 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 we can make a big case on the impact of uh, breakthrough innovation. Probably our best uh, case in the last couple of years has been the development of Nescafe Dolce Gusto. The concept is the coffee shop at home, uh, started uh, in 2006, three markets, four million Swiss francs. In 2015, this will be a one billion Swiss francs uh, platform only in Europe. But that requires big investments behind the brands and uh, behind also uh, uh, capital expenditures. We are building up, as we speak, our third factory uh, in Europe, a greenfield side in the eastern part of Germany. Uh, great success also with um, uh, Petcare. Uh, Petcare has been a category extremely resilient in the crisis uh, and also driven by uh, innovation, driven by geographic expansion, and you see the kind of growth we have enjoyed uh, in the last year, 37% in uh, Russia, uh, growing and emerging market, but as well 7% uh, in more mature and more developed and more competitive markets like uh, France or uh, Germany. So, so much for the impacts of innovation and investment uh, behind the brand. It is possible to grow uh, in Europe. And if we look at our uh, global performance that just the first quarter of 2013 in a context of uh, recession, in a context of uh, declining categories, you can see that uh, we have been capable to grow 1.5% and I've put, uh, without naming them, uh, all our key international competitors, nobody has been capable to grow uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, now, clearly, investing uh, for growth has a virtuous impact and I come back to uh, the economic sustainability dimension and I come back also to the social uh, sustainability dimension. Investing for growth has a positive impact on, on employment and uh, we have been capable to grow our staff by 2-3% uh, per year in the last uh, couple of years. That's one of the positive impacts. Uh, we are also very much, and we think, and we think of people sustainability, the social dimension, it starts with our own people and uh, clearly people are at the core, people are at the center of everything we do. Uh, we uh, really mean that uh, we put people before processes. Uh, we also embra embrace diversity. You should uh, visit our head office in Vevey. It looks a little bit like the Babel Tower. We got 100 different nationalities working uh, at uh, our head office. And uh, obviously, um, creating shared value uh, is the basic way we do uh, business. And let me explain you in more detail the way we go about it. Um, that's the way we see it. And it all starts with compliance. Compliance with uh, norms, compliance with regulation, but also compliance with our own values and principles. Sustainability uh, is also a critical dimension, economic, social, uh, but also environmental. And, and then we look in the spirit of what Mark has explained, we look at where our activities intersect the most with uh, uh, social uh, uh, society problems, society issues. And clearly, uh, there is one which is kind of obvious, uh, which is nutrition. Uh, if you look at the developed world, Europe, uh, but as well the US, obviously, uh, uh, one of the major uh, problems is uh, the one 1.5 billion people overweight and obese with all the impact this has got on uh, you know, uh, life expectancy, on uh, uh, performance at work, on, on at many levels, also on the uh, health care costs, uh, many, many impacts. That's one aspect, 1.5 billion people obese or overweight uh, in the developed world. But on the other side of the planet, we got 1 billion people that suffer from malnutrition. And there as well, we do believe that we can make a difference and we can be part of the solution. Water is the second uh, focus area. Why is that? Well, because 70% of the water used in the world goes into growing 
agricultural commodities, agricultural raw materials. So uh, clearly water is critical to our industry. 20% uh, goes into the industry, 10% is for uh, human, uh, uh, human use. So water, again, critical to our development. And uh, rural development, also very key for the reasons that uh, I've uh, mentioned. Uh, we need uh, uh, agricultural raw materials, we need commodities. Uh, we buy 10% of uh, the cocoa uh, produced in the world. Uh, we buy uh, roughly 10% of the coffee produced in the world. We need quality and we need also uh, sustainability in the supply. And in a context where there will be 1 billion more people on the planet in the next 12 years, in a context where uh, through economic development, through urbanization, more people have access to packaged foods and access to food. It is clear that uh, this is also a very, very key dimension. And then the last point, uh, more specific to Europe, and coming back to unemployment and youth unemployment being possibly uh, the most acute of all uh, the uh, economical and social problems Europe is faced with, with very long-term consequences, we have put as well youth employment as one of our focus areas. So again, it all starts with compliance, compliance with the UN Global Compact, compliance with our corporate business principles, and we got as well a supplier code because we understand also our responsibility across our value chain end to end. Uh, sustainability, again, value chain end to end, uh, we look at our responsibility at each and every stage of the value chain, and we look at it increasingly, not only from farm to fork, but uh, to the coffee bean, to the dust bean, including the recyclability or the recycling dimension, which is so uh, critical. And, uh, and again, creating shared value, all three dimensions, nutrition, uh, 1.5 billion people overweight or obese on the planet, 1 billion people suffering from malnutrition, 2 billion people not having access to sanitized water. Water, critical dimension because of its impact on uh, agricultural raw material and the rural development for all the uh, reasons I've explained. And again, in Europe, specific to Europe, uh, youth, youth employment. Uh, just a few words about our plants in this, uh, in this area. Uh, the, the, the problem is visible. Uh, the problem is so big that uh, uh, the EU and most member, member states have uh, put it as, as, as a key uh, a point uh, to resolve and are, are putting together plans how to address youth, un, youth unemployment. Uh, but I do believe personally that uh, the public sector cannot solve the problem alone. Most of the jobs are in the private sector. So uh, companies, business has to be part of the solution. And this is uh, basically the plans we are putting together. Our plans will be fourfold. Uh, uh, we uh, ambition uh, to bring a positive impact to 20,000 young people across Europe in the next uh, three years, 2014-2016, through direct employment, through vocational training and apprenticeship. We would like as well to leverage our supplier base. We got 63,000 suppliers across Europe and we would like to engage them and encourage them to be part as well of the solution. Just think of it, if each and every one of them would take one apprentice more, the impact this could have on top of the 20,000 people uh, we would like to, uh, for, which we, for whom we would like to facilitate access uh, to the professional world. And the last point uh, of uh, our program, of our plan, is to engage our own people in career counseling, in career mentoring, as one of the key issues people face with, young people face with, is that they just, some of them just don't know how to apply to a job, how to uh, engage with companies, and uh, I do believe that our people uh, can uh, meaningfully uh, contribute. So those are the key dimensions on which we are focusing on. Globally, uh, nutrition, health and wellness, water, rural development, and more specific to Europe, youth employment uh, with uh, uh, the, the beneficial effect of our investments, also with the fact that we got to replace uh, the uh, baby boomers that are getting to retirement age, and uh, we need to prepare the next generation to secure 
uh, our growth uh, in the long term. So that's, those are the key points of our creating shared value uh, vision. And uh, this belief, strong belief that, uh, you know, despite headwinds, uh, it's a lot about headwinds uh, in Europe uh, through creating shared value, uh, we can set our own course and, uh, and, and grow in such a difficult environment. Thank you very much.